get your I'm Charlene Gaynor, the CEO of the Association of Educational Publishers. And I am joined today by a, a distinguished panel. Uh, Catherine Casserly, who is the CEO of Creative Commons. Bill Olsey, the Executive Vice President of McGraw-Hill Education. Mary Mitchell, Senior Vice President of Marketing, Scholastic Education. Gary Lopez, the Executive Director of the Monterey Institute for Technology and Education, MITEI. And Sheb Ranbaum, on behalf of the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management in Education, or ISCME. We are here today to uh, make an announcement that we think has tremendous significance for our industry. Um, so let's begin um, by showing you a slide. <laughs> by showing you a slide. <laughs> you were supposed to answer back a slide. <laughs> uh, next one, please. So many of you might know that um, very recently, la last week on Thursday, Microsoft, Google, and Yahoo announced the publication of a, a, a metadata foundational framework called schema.org. It's a, a form, format vocabulary that the three search engines have um, agreed to with the expectation that this would provide a platform to facilitate um, a, a better search capabilities and more precise search capabilities for all information on the World Wide Web. Can you change, please? Um, one example that they've used to help illustrate the, the, the benefits of more precise data uh, search is um, in the recipe and food industry where this is already in place, you can see that if you search potato salad, for example, that you will find down the left hand, hand side a number of criteria that you can use to narrow your search. What ingredients would you like in your potato salad? What, how many calories in your potato salad? Do we have the right slide? So that gives you a sense of what <laughs> what a more refined search capability would be. But of course, in education, I mean, education is not potato salad. It's much more complex than that. Uh, so we are here today to announce um, a joint effort, a, a co-partnership between Creative Commons and AEP to um, lead the initiative to be the first industry to create a metadata framework specifically for an industry. We feel that this is a, a really a, a tremendous opportunity to be of service not only to our members in AEP but primarily to the to the students to the educators and to the users of the of the information um, on the internet since the easy access to high quality learning resources is the end goal of this project and since the provision of high quality learning resources is the mission of our members. We think that this is a very good fit for us. Uh, as I said, it's a collaborative effort and, and Kathy will be making a couple of um, comments. What you need to um, uh, understand basically is that we will work together um, in the development of uh, vocabulary. I, I describe it this way. We will help to identify what the crucial values of our potato salad are. Um, and there will be, uh, as AEP's role in this is twofold. First is to provide representatives to the working group. And second is to be responsible primarily for the communication around the project, both external communication such as this announcement, a website and some ongoing communication that will help to keep you, the publishers, and the rest of the world apprised of um, where where we where we stand, I can as we as we progress. Um, there are a couple of things besides the opportunity to collaborate with Creative Commons that we think is very important about this. Part of it is the the support that has already been um, uh, gathered from a number of very significant industry partners. Launch partners, some of those are with us here at this table, as I mentioned earlier. Others in the audience include um, Emilio Bernabe from SMART, 
Janet Pinto from Kariki and <laughs> Jonathan Ogilvy from um, HMH. Uh, finally, from AEP's point of view, um, we are very pleased today to also announce the um, those representatives from AEP who will be serving on the working group, and they're also here in the room today. And that is um, Lee Wilson from PCI, Randy Wilhelm from NetTracker, and Michael Johnson from um, Full Potential. So with that said, I'll pass it over to um, Kathy. Thank you. Oh, you are sorry. You're all set. I think you should be able to hear me. Um, Mike, can you hear me in the back? No, maybe I need the mic. All right, maybe they just turn the volume up. Thank you. Volume control. Um, I'm delighted to be here this afternoon uh, representing Creative Commons and our community with uh, the partnership here with the American Education Publishers. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization based in Silicon Valley. We're a global organization, um, and we've been in existence for almost 10 years. <coughs> The mission of Creative Commons is to promote innovation, creativity, and sharing on the internet by allowing creators the flexibility to tag their work with an open license. So at this point in time, over 500 million assets on the internet have been tagged with the Creative Commons license, which allows other people to know they can use, reuse, remix, um, and build on and innovate on the initial assets that creators have put that out there as their alternative. Um, we also have over 70 jurisdictions across the world who have ported the Creative Commons license to their country. So this is very much a global effort, very much a global movement. And so we are delighted to be here today to be a lead member of this effort, to be partnering with AEP and the publishing community to create this common vocabulary for describing learning resources. During the process, Creative Commons will be responsible for convening the technical working group, and we will work to ensure maximum buy-in and future benefit, particularly with respect to interoperability. Many of us have been down this road before, and this road has ended abruptly, and we have not been successful. And we are not taking that um, avenue this time. We are looking for success. We are not looking for a long, uh, drawn-out process, but bringing the community together, we look to build this common metadata framework. And we will do this in a very transparent way. As we bring together the working group and the community, we will be sure to share it with the broader community about the progress we're making and continue to pull in uh, input and buy-in from the general um, memberships. Uh, to do so, we're going to just have a few pieces that we will look at. First, we're going to look quickly. We're going to look at lessons learned so we will not <coughs> repeat past um, hardships and challenges. We will, we will look for simplicity and consensus at the same time not watering down what the metadata efforts will look like. We will work to generate adoption across communities, and we will make sure that we are congruent with other vocabularies. Creative Commons believes that people will be better served, will be better cons consumers, and that this will be good for everyone to have this common metadata framework, this common vocabulary that we can all use. But the big winners that we all need to stay focused on will be the students, and it will be the learners who will be able to find the materials and content, whether commercial or openly licensed, thus creating a win-win-win for the learners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can't hear us? Now you can. Okay. Thanks, Charlene. I'm Bill Olds, the Executive Vice President from McGraw-Hill Education. Wonderful to be here. Always good to be in our nation's capital as part of this very important initiative. Um, Charlene talked about the potato salad recipe a little while ago. Who would think that uh, searching Google or Bing or Yahoo uh, for potato salad recipes and uh, searching for the best ways to learn how to perhaps multiply fractions uh, have anything in common. Um, but in fact, if you think about search and how we use search, they, they do. Um, of course they do. In each case, you're making content more available, more accessible at the point of need, at the teachable moment, uh, whether it's for a family barbecue or for a midterm exam. 
Um, as soon as we heard about the concept of creating a metadata framework for learning resources, we thought this is a compelling idea, this is a potentially important initiative, McGraw-Hill wants to be a part of it. We'd like to take the, uh, certainly we'd like to take a moment to thank the Gates Foundation, the Hewlett Foundation for underwriting the grant. McGraw-Hill Education looks forward to collaborating, certainly with Charlene's group at AEP, uh, also with um, Creative Commons, Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, and the other uh, member companies up here on this important initiative. Uh, we all know in this room, uh, better than most, that education is a, a very important path to success for so many around the world. It's critical that we make educational resources more accessible, putting them, putting them always at the fingertips of teachers, students, parents, caregivers, exactly as they're needed, when they're needed, is a very important thing for us to endeavor to do together. At McGraw-Hill, we've worked very hard to create and deliver compelling digital content. We do it every day in every way that we can. And we're making sure that it's always tied to improving instruction and always tied to student and teacher achievement. This initiative should benefit teachers and students uh, and curriculum and content providers alike by improving accessibility and discoverability and expanding the market for learning. The end result that we're all striving for, Kathy just mentioned it a few moments ago, is improved outcome for our students and our graduates, and ensuring that all our graduates are college ready, workplace ready, ready to succeed in the world. So McGraw-Hill is very happy to be a part of this and happy to be here. Hi, can you hear <coughs> Can you hear me? I usually don't even need a mic, okay. Uh, I'm Mary Mitchell, Senior Vice President at Scholastic based in New York, and thanks for having us here. On behalf of everybody at Scholastic, we're delighted to help launch this initiative. Um, as longtime partners to and advocates for teachers, uh, we support any innovation that makes it easier for teachers to discover the materials they need to efficiently and effectively deliver instruction. Um, we've, heard, we've had discussions with our educator partners from around the country for the last 18 months, and we've talked a lot about the Common Core Standards. What we've heard from them loud and clear is that they are going to need support as they transition to these standards. And that any, um, the efficient discovery of educational material aligned to these standards is a really important first step. So Scholastic has long offered educators a wealth of free supplemental materials on Scholastic.com. Um, we know that teachers value this support uh, we, because we see 1.5 million teachers a week. Uh, just an ex as an example, one of our most popular um, offerings of free support comes around Thanksgiving when we had 10 million page views of our Thanksgiving instructional materials. 50,000 teachers signed into a live webcast. If we can make it easier for all those teachers and more out there to find materials like this, then that's a win-win for us. It's good for teachers and adopting consistent, predictable tagging frameworks certainly makes good business sense for us. So uh, on behalf of all of us, I'd just like to say that we appreciate the leadership that AEP and um, Creative, <laughs> Creative Commons, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I've had that stuck in my head all morning. Creative <laughs> Commons are showing on this. Um, and we look forward to helping implement it. So thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Gary Lopez from Monterey Institute for Technology and Education. And for us, this is a really a big deal. Um, we're a small non nonprofit corporation that develops and assembles educational resources for high school and community college students and teachers. We're not McGraw and we're not Scholastic, so we do not have the brand recognition or the web presence necessary for broad visibility to the students and the teachers that we serve. The power of this new framework will help change that. Uh, over the last three years ago, uh, these projects have been uh, ongoing, and the use of the content at our open source site, hippocampus.org, has grown to tens of thousands of, uh, of U.S. classrooms every month. We also have an institutional membership uh, that supports these projects, the National Repository of Online Courses, and that includes 28 of the State Departments of Education or their, or their virtual schools. But despite this broad usage of the content, a web search for algebra or U.S. history or any of the other general education subjects that we support rarely includes uh, content from hippocampus.org. This new framework, um, we will no longer be invisible. 
Now a student or teacher searching the web for quality multimedia content correlated to the common curriculum will have hippocampus appear on their search list. <clears throat> now a student or a teacher looking for content that they can remix uh, for free open content that they can uh, change for their own needs will be able to find uh, content at hippocampus and other open education resource sites. We wanted to thank the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation for making this all possible. Thank you. I'm Shep Randbaum. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education, which uh, manages and curates uh, OER Commons. Uh, it's a comprehensive library of over 35,000 resources that gives teachers and professors access to course materials, their own uh, uh, learning lesson plans and other learning materials, and to be part of a discussion about what's happening and in, in what works in the classroom. Open education holds the promise of opening the door to continued learning and spreading the use of low-cost learning materials for millions of people all over the world. The success of the movement, however, depends on how well and how fast we can address numerous data integration challenges. Content developers and aggregators need to go beyond the tangled web of entry and continue to find ways to bring together numerous technologies, software applications, and websites to benefit learning. Today's announcement of the schema initiative aimed at standardizing microdata to bolster content discovery, discoverability is a huge step forward. We hope that the changes announced today can do for students, educators, and online learners what Melville Dewey did to help librarians and readers 150 years ago when he created standardized card cataloging. Dewey's efforts helped expand and improve the quality of information available to address a knowledge explosion and enable readers to find information they needed regardless, regardless of where they lived. Our hope is that this project will create a learning explosion, providing instructors, students, and self-learners immediate useful information about the learning tools they need and the, the value that they provide. Thanks to the initiative, scholars, content providers, and aggregate, aggregators can immediately work together to create metadata rather than getting tripped over in uh, discussions over standards. This will enable a synchronized effort to align materials to the Common Core standards. Uh, ISKME has already integrated the schema feature that is live on its OER Commons site that includes a range of microdata <coughs> elements. Um, visit us online at OERcommons.org, or beginning today, you can use Google, Bing, or Yahoo to find what you're looking for. Thank you. 